Amen. Well, God is going to do some awesome things tonight. I never come into the sanctuary or the presence of God without expecting him to do something. And you should be the same way. Amen. I mean, if you have to just get selfish, if you have to say, just Lord, just me. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes some people don't come with the same motive. They just want to see what you're wearing. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's not hungry that comes in. And so it's, it's not a, a pull all the time on the word like it should be. But don't ever come into the presence of God without expecting to be changed. Amen? Without expecting a miraculous move. And so I believe God to do some awesome things in here tonight. I believe that scales are going to be falling from eyes tonight. I'm crazy enough to believe that tumors are going to fall off tonight. And guess what? It don't even have to be a message of healing, but God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask a thing. Like Pastor Jay, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, while you're standing, go with me in your Bibles to the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers chapter 27. And we're going to start reading at verse 8. And when you're there, if you'd signify by saying, I got it. it. Hallelujah. And and I'd like to, if you're able, if you could stand on your feet for the reading of this awesome word. Amen. 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 We want to give honor and respect where it is due. Hallelujah. Is everybody ready? Okay. All right, here we go. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, from the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And those, those were named, and these were the names of his daughters, excuse me, Mela, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terza. And they stood before Moses, before Eleazar, the priest, and before the leaders of all the congregation, by the doorway of the tabernacle of the meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, but he was not in the company of those who gathered together against the Lord, but in the company or, or in the company with Korah, but he died in his own sin, and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be removed from among the family because he had no son? Give us a possession among our father's brothers. So Moses brought this case before the Lord, and, say, and the Lord spake to Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak what is right. You shall surely give them a possession of their inheritance among their father's brothers, and because the inheritance of their father, and cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, If any man dies and has no son, then you shall give his inheritance to pass to his daughter. Amen? Amen. Before you're seated, I want you to turn to your neighbor and just with some prophetic enthusiasm, as Pastor Jay says, and I want you to tell him, What's mine is mine. What's mine is mine. Hallelujah. Turn to your, your other neighbor and say, What's mine, What's mine? is mine. And I don't care how saved you is, you can't have it. Okay, my Bible won't fit up here. Hallelujah. This, um, this to me is one, um, one of the most incredible stories in the Bible. It, it speaks of five young women who are strong, they're bold, they're very courageous, Um, aggressive women, they're world shakers, they're history makers, and they're mountain movers. Hallelujah. And I believe that this is the position that our Father God wants us to be in on a continual basis. Amen? Amen. This is the position that God wants us to have. If we're to have any dominion in this land, we have to know what belongs to us. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, what's mine mine. is mine. And there's no way that you can be passive and, or, or keep your mouth shut or be shy about these things and think that you're going to get what belongs to you. You're going to have to open up your mouth and you're going to have to begin to speak. Amen? Again, tell your neighbor, say, what's mine is mine. What's mine is mine. So you say, 
Pastor V, how can I become this? I've been in passive all my life. I've been quiet. I've been shy. I, I'm not combative. I'm not confrontational. So how am I supposed to do this and so that I can survive in this world and not be run over? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Number one, you have to know your inheritance. You have to know what is your inheritance, what belongs to you. Amen? Hallelujah. If it's healing, if you don't know that healing belongs to you, you'll be sick all the days of your life. Prosperity. If you don't know that you're supposed to be prosperous in this earth, then you'll be broke, busted, and disgusted the rest of your days. Amen? Now, y'all can holler back at your girl. I know I got on a skirt, but I'm going to let it do what it do. Amen? If it's favor, if you don't know that you're supposed to have favor on your job, in your home, in the parking lot at Walmart, if you don't know these things, then you know what? You're forfeiting everything that is supposed to come to you. Amen. You have to know what belongs to you. Amen. It is a mindset. Amen. If it's a sound mind, if you don't know that you're supposed to have a sound mind, then people are going to continue to drive you crazy. And you're going to continue to let them drive you crazy because you don't know who you are, what belongs to you. These things belong to us as children of God. These things belong to us because of the covenant that we have with God. These things belong to us. Tell your neighbor, say, what's mine is mine. Now, interestingly enough, in this day, when women didn't have a lot of say-so, you know, um, kind of pushed back into the background, we have, have, they have very little rights. And at this time, these, for these five young women to contest something as big as this was, was a pretty bold statement for back then. Amen? Can, can you agree with me on that? When they're not supposed to say anything, they already knew they weren't supposed to get nothing, but they had the nerve to say something about what they believe belonged to them. Amen? Amen. And so I, that, that, I, that made me admire them so much now, because this story is not read a lot. For, for first of all, you can't hardly say Zelophehad. Huh? <laughs> it took me a minute. Um, the story not, not read as much, not taught as much, but still one of the most incredible stories in the Bible, five of the most incredible women in the Bible. Amen? Amen. Now, brother, this is for all of us. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, imagine with me. I like to, I like to, to kind of take you in the scriptures. If, we could, if you would, just jump into it with me. Amen? Imagine with me there's going to be a will read. It's going to be some land handed out, land that belonged to your daddy. And number one, you didn't get called to come to the reading of the will. Come on, are you, you with me now? Fi finding out that this is getting ready to go on, and then nobody even called you and told you, you know, this is getting ready to happen. You just got it kind of through the grapevine. It's going to be so Zelophehad's land is about to be auctioned off or given away. This is, this is your daddy. Amen? Now, Zelophehad had five girls. The Bible says he had no sons. Now, Imagine all this land. We got crops. We got cattle. I mean, just everything. Now, one man could not till and work this whole piece of land by himself. So it's, it's, we can, we can kind of say that these girls helped to work and till this land. Amen? Can you agree with me on that one? Okay. And so I imagine that these girls had to get a mindset. Wait a minute. Now, I worked on this land. And I till this land, work hard on this land, and you mean to tell me that I can't even get a portion of this? The devil is a lie. Tell your neighbor, say, what's mine is mine. 